At Bluebird Care, we understand the challenge of trying to keep your loved ones safe, protected and cared for. That's why we provide high quality care at home services in Sligo and Mayo, protecting our customers and delivering outstanding care. For more information, contact us on 071 915 Hello and welcome to our Brafie Village COVID-19 special. Last week we took a look back at the Community Council, St John's National School, a nostalgic look at Brafie Village, the local GEA club and Brafie Post Office. When the lockdown came in, and I suppose the first phase was the 12th of March, and then a couple of weeks later the actual full lockdown came in, and uh, people bought into it almost immediately and uh, from where you had a community around here in Brafie where people were moving about freely, you had a busy hotel here, a busy gym where we are right now, um, the GA pitch across the road and the school, you know, hive of activity, suddenly that was all gone and it was like, you know, I remember reading in the Brafie Centenary book about, you know, how small the village was back in the time when there was hardly any houses here, you know, there was only two or three houses along the main road from the school to Kilkenny Cross and it kind of felt a bit like that, you know, from talking to people and there had been a huge, huge change in, in an instant in how the community was going about their business and uh, from where you had uh, hives of activity around the centre of the village, the shamrock, the school, the, the pitch, the hotel here, suddenly all gone and it was kind of became like a very eerie place uh, whereby there was no traffic, no movement and uh, everyone has their own experience, everyone found, you know, it impacted on people in so many different ways and I know from my own family's point of view, from my parents living here in Brafie, um, not being able to see, uh, you know, not being able to visit them was difficult for me but I think that the hardest thing for them and for so many parent, uh, people of their generation was not being able to see the grandkids so they have five grandkids, two in Ackle and three in Galway and they haven't seen them in over three months and we're still not sure when they'll be able to see them. You know, it's 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 evolving all the time, but that's very difficult. And FaceTime and, and WhatsApp video calls and just sending on videos is, is all great and, and, and so on. But it, it's a step removed from what you'd like to do, which is meet, uh, get them to see each other in person. So that's a challenge. Um, in my work with the Mayo News, it has a, had, had a major impact. We've been fortunate that we've been able to stay open um, to you know the government scheme there would have would have helped in a big way and uh, we would have had a big fear that readers would not be able to get out and about and read the paper so one of the things we did in a big way was we pushed our digital edition so by for people who you know were afraid to leave home they might be able to uh, you know purchase the paper online and view it online and we were also able to get people uh, deliveries of the copy through through the post as well and there was quite a, a lot of demand for that. COVID-19 is the biggest story as a newspaper we will ever cover I hope you know because I I, I can't imagine anything more more dramatic or extreme than this. People want that covered as well as possible but they also want to break from it as well. So we, whilst we're looking at the Mayo numbers, how it has impacted Mayo people in Mayo and Mayo people who might be based around the world, we're also looking at for as much alternative uh, cover, uh, alternative copy and material as possible. So that could be looking back through the archives, it could be interviewing people, it could be light-hearted stories. People like a break from the serious stuff that we're experiencing now. So we're trying to get that blend right. So it's been, I, I'll be honest, you know, if, if you're a journalist and you're not um, uh, enthusiastic about covering a big story like this or, uh, you know, such a, such a life change in circumstances as this, you're in the wrong game. So it has been, it has been a tremendous experience from that point of view. Um, and, you know, no more than everyone we'd hope to have learned an awful lot from it that will inform how we, how we I suppose, operate as journalists and as a newspaper moving into the future. I'm a dairy farmer. We make 55, 60 hosting cows here. Uh, I should say freezing hosting cows. And uh, we supply the local co-op here at Riva with our milk. And um, it's just a family farm. I, I just operate here, here on my own. And uh, that's pretty much what we do. And uh, as I say, it's, it's just a way of life with us here. It's seven days a week. We supply milk all year round to co-op. Uh, the Bravey here it has a lot of new houses and recent developments in recent years. It's still predominantly a rural area and there's a lot of small part-time farmers. Not so many dairy farmers, probably count them on one hand, but predominantly beef, sheep, mixed farming with a part-time. They, they wouldn't support 
them fully their income, but they would have a part time, uh, would work part time as well, and th that would still be the predominantly in, in this route. Brave people think it as a, as part of Casper now, but I would show you it's, it's still very much rural area. Yeah. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 back in March, the farming community, like every other community, it's, it's fearful, it's worried, it's concerned. They're, they're uncertain what, what the future holds. Basically, I suppose first it has hurt us financially. Uh, our milk price has fallen 20% since the outbreak of COVID. Beef prices have basically collapsed. They've improved a little in recent weeks, but they're still at a very low, low base. Um, the other side, is, I suppose, about farming, you must remember it's, it's a lonely way of life. You can often work from dawn to dusk on your own without meeting people. And social outlets we had would be the mart, maybe on Saturday go over to Val, meet people, maybe even you weren't selling cattle, it was a social outlet. Uh, GA is gone, GA and the rural community is part of our culture. And here in Brave, we would, it is very much part of the culture as well. There's no games on Saturday evening, no games on Sunday. So we're losing out you'd worry for your mental health for the rural community because there's no social outlets for them at the moment whatsoever. So I'm sure eventually COVID will pass hopefully and we look to the future and the future for farmers in the Brave area around here. It's it's hard to know. We, 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 um, we're depending a lot on subsidies from the EU and hopefully that will continue. And for, for the, the other issue we would have is the young people coming up, my son here, does he want to work 365 days a week, or a year, excuse me, and the lifestyle that goes with it. I think a lot of the young, younger people now would rather get, get educated and go to Dublin or get work in Castle Bar. So that'll be another issue facing the agricultural community here in Brafie, and in every area for that matter. But the future for me in farming is I'll continue on farming as long as I can. I enjoy it, it's the way of life. And I look forward to after the COVID to get back into, going back over to the Martin on Saturday, GA matches on Saturday evenings and Sundays, and maybe, sneak down to the shamrock at one or two and not begin. There has been a history of 25 card games here in the parish of Brafie for a long number of years, longer than I can remember or can recall. Uh, I know in the Barney Community Centre, which is maybe just a mile from our clubhouse here, the Brafie GEA club uh, decided to run the game. Uh, it was first run in the community centre over beside the school uh, and then into the clubhouse here once uh, the, this building was built. Uh, so, um, 25 has been part of the community here over the years. Everybody misses the game uh, on the Tuesday night and a lot of these players, uh, they'd be here on the Tuesday night, they could be somewhere else on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. I know as an aunt of my own, she plays six nights a week. <laughs> uh, it's, it's her social outlet. But uh, it has had uh, a serious effect, especially on the older people. Twenty twenty was looking to be a very, very strong year for us here in the hotel. Uh, we had eighty five weddings on our books. Uh, we had five uh, conferences. Uh, we had one seven day conference uh, of uh, psychiatrists from Europe. Uh, so it was going to be a very, very, very good year. Our employment levels were touching two hundred and thirty um, between full time and, and part time staff, and it just like a light. It all came falling down. I didn't realise how hard it is to close a hotel. Uh, for, for example, you know, our front door has never closed. Uh, and we, we went looking for the key to lock it. And there's no key for it because it, it's, it's never actually closed. Uh, we still had an element of frontline workers staying. Um, so, for, for example, we have two doctors who stay with us uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, and we have uh, any work that's happening in the hospital uh, or related to the hospital, th th they're, they're staying here. You're staying here because you need to stay here. You're not staying here because you want to stay here because uh, once you walk in the front door, you've got your questionnaire to fill out. Um, uh, you've got to present to us your, uh, a letter from your employer to say that you're allowed to travel and that you're an essential worker. Uh, so it, it's, it's not open to, to ju just anybody. Uh, or th there's, there's no breakfast, there's no, there's no bar, there's no restaurant, there's no service in your bedroom, uh, so there, there's no housekeeping. There is a, 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 there's a very strong chance that you actually won't see anybody or meet anybody when you come into the hotel. 
because it's all prepaid, your keys left at reception. Uh, it's a very, very different setup. Uh, you can just look around our lobby, uh, there, there's no furniture. Uh, within the bedroom, you have got one pillow. Uh, there's no uh, extra facilities there. You, there's no spare blanket. There's no, uh, the touch points have been minimized to, to stop the, the spread if there ever was to be a spread of uh, COVID-19. The whole experience for the guests, we've got to uh, uh, ensure uh, and promote confidence in our cleaning practices within the hotel. It, that's going to be paramount. Um, so we'll, we'll have to promote how we're cleaning and how we're staying as best we can to stay safe. So w one example, in, in the restaurant, is, the menus are probably going to be a thing of the past. When you check in now, you'll get your, your phone, you'll scan a barcode at reception, and then that'll allow you to order your pint from your phone. It'll allow you to order your uh, um, food from your phone. If you're in your bedroom, it allows you to order your room service from your phone, uh, eliminating the needs for, 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 for menus. Um, and it's this sort of change that is so fast is going to just become the new norm. What we're working on now is our Arcade Media Falls, how we welcome our guests back because we're, we're knowing, known for our, our friendliness and our warm welcome and that's amongst our staff, that's our biggest asset is, is our welcome. So we need to figure out now how we give the Arcade Media Falls in these new, uh, new times but hopefully we'll have a warm welcome for everybody when we do open. We've made it very busy. Well, it has a huge effect financially, like you, we, we lost 70% of our business in, for, for the two months. Now it has increased in the last couple of weeks since the builders have come back and that kind of thing. We've, it is, the business has improved quite substantially. Everyone has got, has got very busy. A director at the Cleaning Corporation. We're a professional services contract cleaning business based in Brafey, just outside Castlebar in County Mayo. Um, this year we're celebrating our 25th anniversary, 25 years in business in August. Um, established on the 6th of August 1995 by my husband John, who had worked in commercial contract cleaning in London and the southeast of England prior to moving back to Castle Bar because he's a native of the town. And I suppose now really what we're looking at is COVID-19 and coronavirus and how it's affected our business. Um, we've been working in contamination control and fogging services and infection control for over a decade and we would have been through other um, pandemics like SARS for example which is probably one that most people are aware of. Um, what COVID-19 has done whilst probably half of our employees are currently not working because a lot of schools and offices are closed. Um, the businesses that are open are busy do cleaning, disinfecting and implementing safety protocols for their people um, and, and a lot of that involves us as a cleaning company to ensure that the environment that the people are, are working in is safe. So I suppose primarily the services that we're providing during COVID-19 would be things like ULV fogging, which is a disinfecting service where you close up a room and use a, a machine that provides a, you're fully suited up in all your PPE um, and you provide a disinfectant through the air to land on all your surfaces and disinfect them. Um, what COVID-19 has done or, or coronavirus has done is it's brought the importance of cleaning and providing a safe and healthy work environment for your people, for your staff, for your customers, for yourself and your home. It's brought cleaning to the forefront um, of people's minds, which is, which is good for us. We've been here in the Shamrock at least 15 years, if not more. And it has been the part of the community all its life. We just love it here. It's, it's, it's our life. It's everything to us. And since it has closed up, it has left the whole community devastated. Last night was Sunday, March the 15th, 
and we decided ourselves it was safer to close because of the panic over this virus. To get back opened with the restrictions they're bringing in would be totally impossible because this is a country pub. The locals come in here, they sit at the counter, they love sitting up at the counter having the banter and I cannot see it being feasible if we have to go around doing table service. If it's a thing that we are to get back up and running and we're to comply with the current proposed legislation, hopefully down the road it will have changed by then because it would not be practical for us if we take away all our, all our stools from the counter, if we have to provide a table service for the few tables that we have to comply with the two with the two meter two meter guidance that's there i mean i estimate probably maybe pushing it we might get maybe 12 people in to get those 12 people in you're going to have to add additional staff so you're adding additional cost so i mean it would not there is no justification that you could manage to run that business like that i mean the government doesn't come down to the country and have a look and see what it's like in rural Ireland. It's totally different to the cities. And I don't know, will it be feasible to open? That's something we'll have to just wait and see. My name is Anto Heenan from Brafey. I was born and bred in Brafey, native of Brafey. I've uh, been here all my life. Run a small engineering company in Brafey. Unfortunately, the way things are, COVID-19, that's completely gone because I would be going into houses doing staircases or whatever. So that's gone completely. Um, eight weeks ago, there would be two people living in this house. There's now six. My daughter had to come home from Australia. Two sons lost their job in Limerick. Daughter came home from college in Galway. So now instead of buying the shopping for two, we're all of a sudden buying it for six. So that's how it has affected us. So you can say out of uh, the household, there would be five incomes completely gone. My wife is a nurse, so when she comes home, we have to be ultra careful when she comes home. So the whole thing has changed, the whole house has changed, so hopefully it won't last for that long. The one good thing about this is it has brought the community together. I see all my friends, I see all my neighbours, we go for walks, we explore explore the walks in Brafey that we'd never knew of before. Uh, how it has affected me is I am involved in the Male Vice Choir in Mayo, uh, also involved in the Vintage Club. Um, we would practice once or twice a week in the Male Vice Choir, don't see those people, there's 50 of us in it, don't meet them anymore. Um, so that is a big drawback. I opened up here in 2008 and since then we've been lucky to be involved in the community and we've been very busy and very lucky to be part of this community here as well. One of the reasons we opened up was, um, well I worked in America for a while, um, a lot of dental practices in America are actually in the suburbs as part of the communities. Um, we wanted something similar here so we set up our business out of town here in Brefi, but we um, it allows easy access to, to the practice, so lots of free parking. It's in a nice rural com uh, uh, community. We have lovely views here from our practice here. It's a very relaxed place to come in. Since COVID has come along, we've been actually been closed for nine weeks now, and it's obviously had a very big impact on ourselves. Um, Obviously the type of work that we do, we're working in the patient's mouth. Uh, COVID-19 is an upper respiratory uh, infection and obviously we're working directly in the patient's mouth. So it's a, it's a big impact as regards safety for ourselves and for staff and for our patients. So in the last nine weeks, we only really have been able to do emergency appointments on the phone really. Um, we have three hours people on the phone. I usually spend three to four hours per day answering questions, uh, sometimes providing prescriptions and basically just trying to deal uh, with patients uh, as a last resort coming into the practice. We will do our best to provide treatments over the next few weeks in it, and following the current gu guidelines from the government as well as regards social distancing. We're, we're just setting out all of our PPE today and it's just going to be a different way 
of, of working, we'll all be wearing masks like anything. Um, now I understand that when patients come in, a big part of the conversation with dentists um, won't be able to happen because you'll not see the non-verbal communication on the face. But just to let people know that we're very confident about what we're doing and we know we've everything in place, we've all the specialist equipment in place and that we will be able to take care of it. Part of our plans going forward would be to do to have a website, which we hope to have up and running over the next couple of months, which will allow people to in, be, inter, be interactive with the website. And we also want plan to have walks, or at least to develop more walks, to create a better environment, to create possibly work opportunities, and also to look at different aspects of human integration. And one of the things we're doing presently is creating a social history by interviewing older people about their experiences and matching that with the younger people's experiences as well. And the future for Brafie is going to be very good, I believe it is. And this COVID crisis, I think, has taught us a lot. The community is the most important thing. We cannot be selfish or insular in our thought process, but that what we have to do is be more Christian in our thoughts and then be more Christian in the way we encompass all of us. We all have talents and that going forward, we must